Hey guys, Rob here with 3D Printscape. So today's video is going to be installing the Creality touchscreen on my Ender 3 V2. Uh, the process will pretty much be the same uh, for pretty much most of the Creality uh, printers as long as it has the 422 or 427 board. And I am going to be using the stock Creality firmware for this video. I uh, will be making another video probably next covering how to actually get the screen working using Marlin firmware. Uh, so if you're interested in that, uh, just stay tuned. So I'm going to start by just doing a quick unboxing boxing of the screen itself, uh, go through uh, the tools needed, then we'll walk through the actual process to connect it. Uh, you're only going to need some Allen wrenches and you're just replacing one cable, so it's not a difficult install at all. And then we'll jump over to the computer, grab the firmware, and then uh, go to load the firmware and then do a test. So before we go ahead and get started, if you guys haven't already, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe. Thanks. All right guys, so let's go ahead and take a look to see what's in the box. Uh, this is just your basic Creality packaging, nothing too special, uh, though it is clean. Uh, go ahead and open it up. And we've got, um, just looks like some foam, your instruction manual, which we're not gonna need because we're gonna go over all that in this video. And then the screen itself, uh, which is nicely packed in here. It's not gonna get damaged during shipping. Uh, the screen does have a protectant film on it. Then let's go and pop the rest of this out. We've got our additional cables that we need and some mounting hardware. So overall, not much in the box, but it is a pretty simple upgrade. Um, so you don't really need much. All right, so let's go ahead and move over to installing the screen. Before we go ahead and get started with the install, I wanted to show you the two screens side by side here. Obviously I've got an Ender 3 V2 here. So it's got the enhanced screen. It's not the generic one. The new one is still a little bit smaller physically. It looks like the screen size is pretty much about the same, but it doesn't have this knob at the bottom because uh, the stock screen is not touch screen where the new one is. All right, so let's go ahead and start taking everything apart here. Uh, first thing we want to do is take the screen off so it doesn't get in our way. And then we'll want to take this panel off here uh, so that we can actually get to the board and run the new cable. Uh, you will need just a couple Allen wrenches for this install and that's pretty much it. So let's go ahead and take the screen off. Once that's off, we'll just go ahead and disconnect the uh, cable from the back. It just pops right out. And then, um, just to kind of show you really quick, there are three screws that we had to take off or just loosen up so we can actually take the screen off and that's really all that was holding it in place. Uh, set that off to the side. Now uh, we want to take off the screws on top of here. So I'm just gonna take my build plate off uh, so I don't damage it. And then uh, also if you have any filament on the printer, you might wanna take that off as well so it doesn't come rolling off. All right, so depending upon the printer you have, you might have screws in different location. Uh, this one, I've got the one here and then three on the bottom. Uh, same with the Ender 3 Pro. I think the standard Ender 3 just has the ones at the bottom and CR10s will have the same type of setup. All right, so let's go ahead and take those off. And then we have these three screws here, like I mentioned. All right, then with those off, you should just be able to pop this panel off here. And then if you want, you can disconnect this cable here for the fan, so you don't have to worry about having to move it around. All right, so I went ahead and moved the printer around and zoomed in so you can see a little bit better. We will have to cut some of these zip ties in order to get the cable out. And then depending upon the printer, you'll have to rerun the cable. Like this one right here kind of just runs through the back. So you have to pop that out. Be careful not to damage the cable. And in some cases, if you can't get it out, you might have to remove this panel as well, depending upon the printer you have. And actually in this case, we don't have to cut any of the zip ties because that's all for the board itself. So just have to pop this off. There is hot glue on here. Uh, so if you're running into issues trying to get it off, it's probably because of the hot glue here, which is a pain to work with. All right, so we'll go ahead and feed this back through. All right, then once that's out, we can go to uh, start running the other one. All right, you might be wondering why we have to rerun the cables when they look the same at first. But if you see here, the one for the new touchscreen has a different connector and pin out here. It's not the same cable. Uh, so we're just going to set the old one aside and run the new one. All right, so the white connector here is going to actually connect to the touchscreen. So we're going to run it as such. So it's going to run it this way where we have the black adapter. Um, going back to the board. So we'll feed this back in. And 
connect that up. And then we'll start feeding this cable back through here. All right, with that, we'll go ahead and put these screws back in to close this panel back up. And then we'll mount the screen and then we'll jump over to the computer to get the firmware. All right, then we'll flip it over and put the other screw on. All right, so we just flipped it over, then put that screw in. And now we can go ahead and mount and connect the screen. All right, so here's the front of the printer. We got our cable, um, we got our screen, and then the uh, actual bolts that it comes with here. So let's go and take these out. And if you happen to lose any of these, it's the same ones that are on the other screen in this case, so you can reuse them. Uh, but what we'll do is just uh, put the bolt through the uh, one side here and um, all right, so what we got to do is just put the bolt through uh, the back side here so it's on the front and then we'll put the uh, nut on it. You want to make sure that you have the wing on this uh, facing in so that it can actually catch on the um, grooving on the frame. So I'll just go on like this, you want to leave it relatively loose and then you'll do the same thing for the other two. Alright, so from here I like to connect the cable. Um, it can only go in one way, uh, so you just go ahead and connect that as such. And then you'll just align the screen here and the nuts so that they go into the grooves. And then we'll go ahead and tighten everything down. All right, once everything's connected, you can go ahead and peel off the screen protector. And then we'll jump over to the computer, grab the firmware, and then come set it up on the printer. All right, guys, so we're here at the computer on Creality's download page. I also just put the SD card in, uh, so I've got that up as well. All right, so with that, we want to go ahead and grab our firmware. Uh, we want to select our printer type. I'm using the Ender 3 V2 in this example. Uh, it'll pretty much be the same depending upon which Creality printer you have, as long as it has the 422 or 427 board. But let's go ahead and find the V2. It's not this one. I also wanted to point out that I plan on doing videos covering um, the Marlin upgrade as well, so that you can uh, make modifications to the firmware. Uh, such as adding your CR touch or BL touch, filament runout sensors, etc. So, so let's keep going here. Ender 3 V2. And we have the 422 silent board. Uh, so this is going to be what we want here. It's going to be the Ender 3 series touchscreen firmware. Right, so then we'll go ahead and just download this and open it up. Here's our unzipped firmware folder. Um, that printer has the 422 main board. And then they've got two, dis two distinct builds here. Um, one for just your standard and one with BL Touch or CR Touch support. So we don't have a BL Touch on this printer, so this is the one I need. So I'm just gonna copy this. and put it on our SD card and then go put this in the printer. All right, now we wanna go ahead and put our SD card in the printer and then power it on. And it should automatically pull on our firmware, so if you keep an eye on the screen. It's gonna load it up now. And so once your screen loads, you can go ahead and take your SD card out and uh, you should be able to go through and read level your build plate now just make sure everything is uh, level and then you can go ahead and kick off a test print but everything should be working as expected here as you can see here on the sd card in here but um, everything from the touch screen perspective is working nicely but that's really all there is to it i am going to make another video covering how to get the screen working if you want to use marlin uh, that'll be coming up here pretty soon 
Uh, but for now, this will get you going, and it will be the same as if you had the other skin on it, just the touch screen upgrade. And that's pretty much for all the Creality Planner lineup, just make sure you get the one for your board. On a side note, I did have an issue uh, with it leaving the uh, .bin file the first time through. Uh, I ended up just reformatting the SD card, making sure it was a clean format, and set the FAT32. Um, then I did it again, and it picked it up just fine. So if you do have issues where it's not picking up the uh, actual firmware, I'll give that a try. It should load the firmware in less than 10-15 seconds tops. Alright guys, so that covered the process to install the Creality touchscreen on any of the Creality printers that has the 422 or 427 board. Uh, just make sure you get the right firmware for the board unless you're going to have issues with it. Overall, the process was pretty straightforward. The only issue I had was um, getting the printer to read my uh, .bin file the first time and that was because it was a new SD card and I just did a reformat on it and it just picked it up without an issue the following time. So if you're running into issues, give that a try. If you have any questions about what I covered or would like to see any other videos, uh, go to leave a comment below or join us on Discord. Thanks.